and see that if you just add 12 to 1 p.m., it would be 1,300 military time. Another example would be 8 p.m. conventional time. If you just add 12 to 8, you get 2,000, and that would be the military time. The last two digits indicate the minutes of each hour from 01 to 59. Thus, 05 military time would be five minutes after 12 midnight. 0730 military time would be 30 minutes after 7 a.m. 1445 military time would be 2.45 p.m., and so forth. The student manual provides more information about military time if you need a little bit more practice to understand it more clearly. Communication is really much better when using military time. The AM and PM abbreviations must be used, of course, with conventional time. Someone may forget to include AM or PM after they've uh, written the time down. If this happens, the correct time is not communicated. Harm to the patient could occur if the time is not recorded accurately. So you'll find that the majority of facilities that you would be working in do utilize military time. There are certain guidelines that must be followed whenever you're charting. First is you must use a pen. It would never be acceptable to use a pencil because uh, you could erase that and you would never want to have the capability of erasing information that is on a legal record. The pen is always either black or blue. I see black utilized more often than blue. There are a few facilities that I am aware of that uh, would still use a green for the PM shift and a red uh, colored uh, night shift. But with the use of military time, I'm not seeing that happen very often. If you are expected to chart in something other than black or blue pen, you will be made aware in your facility orientation. Another guideline is be sure that you check that you have the right patient, the right chart, and that you have the right room. Always date and time every entry that you make. Chart the entries in correct sequence. For example, chart the care that is given in the order that it occurred. If a bed bath was given before the person was ambulated, be sure that you chart that in the correct sequence. Use accurate spelling and punctuation in your charting. Remembering this is a legal document, you want to make sure that it is uh, correctly spelled, all the words that you utilize. If you have a problem with spelling, then utilize the medical uh, dictionary that's available in your facility or ask somebody else the correct spelling of words until they're more comfortable for you. Or also, some of the people I'm aware of get in a little electronic handheld speller that they just keep in their pocket and then can look up the correct spelling of words if it's a problem. Keep charting legible and either print or write clearly. Leave no empty lines or spaces. Draw a line through any blank space. This will prevent others from recording in a space that includes your signature. You are not permitted to use any ditto marks. So if you're going to be writing the same thing two or three different times, you need to write the words out in longhand uh, uh, or electronically. You need to uh, write the information out, but you may never use ditto marks. Always sign each entry utilizing your first initial, last name, and your title. Never erase or use any whiteout on an error. 
draw one single line through the mistake, that means so that it can still be seen, and write the word error above it and include your initials. Only chart what you have done yourself. You would never chart for someone else or ask someone else to chart for you. Each facility has a particular form or type of charting to be completed by its caregivers. The goals, however, are the same. That is to provide a record of care and treatment given and to record the patient's response to that care in the most accurate manner as possible. This written communication among members of the healthcare team is vital to the safety and benefit of all of those who are in our care. <laughs>